For many of the starter ships in Star Citizen, the humble box delivery contracts can be amongst the most accessible ways to start earning a living in the game. And so this video marks a return to those humble routes by dusting off one of the fun little ships and taking a contract. I'm Farrister, and in this video I'll provide a real-time narration through one of these delivery contracts, all the way from picking up the mission, to picking up the cargo, and delivering that to destination. If this is your first time on this YouTube channel, then welcome! Here you'll find plenty of Star Citizen videos, ranging from guides to reviews, so you might like to check out a few more, or even subscribe to be notified when new videos go live. And for the channel regulars, I hope to read in the comments if you've got any top tips for the Star Citizen gig economy. And we'll start the playthrough by actually taking the mission through the Moby Glass by accessing the Delivery tab. Here we've got a local delivery evaluation mission. It's been some time since I've actually done one of these missions. And we'll spawn in our ship for carrying this precious cargo. In this case, we're going to take out the Reliant Core, Core, depending on how you pronounce it. I love this little Reliant series of ships. So we'll head down to the hangars in the New Babbage Interstellar Spaceport. New Babbage is my home in the Stanton system at the moment. I love the frosty environment. And we have, here we have the Misk Reliant. Big expansive cargo bay in the back of this variant. Well, big for a starter ship I suppose. And critically these two seats up front, making it quite unique amongst many of the smaller ships, in that you have got room to bring a friend if you'd like to. Clear to launch. So I'm just checking where we're going. As the front doors open, and we get airborne. So the Reliant is a somewhat unusual ship in that it's kind of got two states. So the normal flight state is different to the landing gear state. You can see the ship here in its landing gear, and as you switch to flight, it flips from horizontal to vertical profile. Just love that glow of Microtech New Babbage above the sky there. Very cool. So at this point, we need to get enough altitude to get out of the atmosphere and quantum travel to our destination. So I'm going to put my foot on the throttle here. I'm going to use all of the boost, get that speed up, get as much altitude as quickly as possible until we're high enough to do the quantum travel. Now whether you would actually do this if you were always running box delivery contracts, you'd have to work out if it's efficient. Because the fuel in this ship is so cheap, I don't really mind using that. And there we go, we've got enough altitude, so at this point I'm going to set our route. I'm going to have to jump to one of the orbital markers before jumping on to our destination. Calibrate the quantum drive. And make the jump. Often get this thing in Star Citizen where when you're going into quantum travel, like, the whole thing just slows down for a couple of seconds. Quite frustrating. But look at that beautiful ship and that planet. And a random Hercules, hello. Goodbye. There we go, making our way to Calliope. Love how the, the sun just around the top of that moon Looks really cool. So I quite like these delivery contracts as an accessible gameplay loop for new players. All you need is one of the starter ships that has some sort of cargo storage available, which I think most, if not all, 
tend to these days. It's not as skill intensive as combat, so it's a good way to kind of learn some of the ways of controlling a ship, you know, flying around using the quantum drive, take off and landing without having to worry about, um, you know, dealing with the combat systems at the same time. So again, just increasing the speed limiter here as we make our way towards the outpost. Quantum travel usually deposits you 22 to 25 kilometers away. So um, rather than just going slow speed, speed up slightly, make our way towards this pickup point. And really enjoying flying the Reliant again. Ten kilometers to go. Start to see the the mist below creeping away under the surface. As we get a bit closer, just enabling the Toby eye tracker makes it just a little bit easier for seeing what's happening when you're landing. And I can see there are actually two ships landed here already in just some random moon, random outpost. Transition to landing gear mode. You could see the cockpit flick around on the right hand side there as the ship goes back to a horizontal profile. And eyeing up the landing pad. We'll land on this one where the C8R Pisces Rescue is. Now that's a fun little ship. Try and land somewhere in the middle, avoid that ship, look down to see where we're going. And we're down. There we go. Engines off. It's a bit of a theme, this engines off when you land. It's helpful for a couple of reasons. So first of all, it means that um, if you're storing the ship, it's less likely if you respawn it, that it will respawn in the air, which is always a good thing. But also it means that when you're kind of walking around the ship and things like that, you don't, you don't get blown around by the engines and things like that. Also, if you make YouTube videos, it's quite handy to have the engines off because it blows less dust around the place so you can get crisper, cleaner shots of the ship. So head on to the storage, which is where our package is. And there's the box. Don't mind me, pal. Just picking up this box. Obviously, you will need to wear a spacesuit for this. Um, some of the moons, like one or two of the moons, are habitable and don't necessarily require a spacesuit, but the majority of the places that you go to will need it for breathing. And as you can see, it's what, minus 90 degrees Celsius here, so um, you probably also need a spacesuit in most locations just to keep at the right temperature. Love that profile of the Reliant and that Pisces. We love the Pisces as well. What a fantastic little ship. And the cockpit at the front with like the bubbled glass. Just so cool. Get aboard via the ramp at the back. Always close the door behind you and then try and see if the box will just place peacefully. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, seems to depend on the server. And as of right now, most of the servers seem to be PTU side rather than live side. But we've got the box down, so that's fine. A Little bit clumsier than ideal, but the box is down. So here we are, back into the pilot seat. We've got engines on, and here you can have a nice external view of the takeoff. Look at that beautiful profile of a ship. Accelerate away, back to the vertical mode. And once again, we'll try and get out of atmosphere so that we can quantum travel. Now, probably should have gone straight up again, but you can see Microtech ahead of us. Um, it's at a slightly lower angle in the sky, so rather than go up and then point the ship again, the lazy pilot in me just says, 
fly towards where you're going, slowly get enough altitude, and then once you're out of the atmosphere, you can quantum travel. The atmosphere of the moons is much lower than the atmosphere on the planet, so 2,000 meters, we're good to go. Calibrate the drive. Punch it. Yes, that's the other th nice thing about a lot of these delivery missions is they tend to be shorter hops so it's just in and around a planetary I don't know if you say planetary system but a planet in its moons which in a starter ship that doesn't have the fastest of quantum drives is um, a welcome reprieve I think Once you're in range of the planet, you can choose any of the local outposts to do a quantum hop to. In this case, we're going straight to New Babbage, and the delivery point is usually on one of the rooftops, which is pretty cool. Entering into New Babbage in the dark. Can't really see a lot, but pretty nice looking nonetheless. Quite like all of the lights that come off the buildings as well. I feel like once you get a bit closer to the ground, you almost get a glow from the lights, so you can see a lot better as you get in close, which is quite quite clever, I think. And it just looks like a city from the air as well, with all of the skyscrapers and the transit lines. Very cool. Alright, so it looks like we are coming down to one of the rooftops. Remember when this was first introduced as a city and they talked about these, you know, these rooftops on these skyscrapers and in previous cities there was like a an automated system that stopped you from getting too close whereas in microtech you could fly as close as you want to most places you can come in and land on the roof check that there aren't any paintings on there there we are and they're also quite nicely marked as almost like formal landing pads like you might see helipads on a high building Brilliant. So, engines off. Out the chair, we'll deliver the box. Sometimes you have to be a little bit careful as you're getting out on these rooftops because the wind can <laughs> blow you around. Because you are quite high up here on a, a windy planet. There he is. Deliver in his box. Easiest 3,000 credits I ever earned. Press drop off in the terminal. Box goes in the box. Jobs are good. Un. So that's it. That's the box delivery gameplay route in Star Citizen 317.5. Hope you enjoyed this one, and as ever, Thank you for watching.